Nod Harris, welcome to Hurlburt Field me, Air Force Special Operations Command. Um, I, I told you earlier, we, you're in the land of the quiet professional. So our men and women are asked to do missions on a moment's notice. And we don't talk a lot about what we do. It's a shared experience. We'll look at each other across the room and it's a nod, a handshake. Sometimes those missions are in some pretty terrible places. Uh, but we pride ourselves in getting after the mission. So it's awesome to have you here. My first question for you is, uh, what are your thoughts on the military? What advice or what, you know, what can you offer our team that we can capture? Well, I mean, uh, I think me being here is already just an experience that, you know, um, I could, I will never forget. I mean, just going, just like I said, meeting people like you, um, Travis and people I, I know, just um, just hearing and, and, and learning more about you know what you guys are doing. I think that's a, that's an honor right there alone. Um, you know, me hearing about the the, the Air Force or really anything in a, a military or any type of uh, I don't know how to say that. What do you guys call it? like, like missions. missions or anything? Yeah. You know, we, we we always hear that. You know, they're very strict. You know, they're very on schedule. They're very they're very um, you know focused on on what they got to do. And you know, we always hear that. We're the number one at everything. You know, we have the number one power in the world. We have the number one military. We have the number one air force. We have the number one everything. Where, where you know, a a machine. You know, really just, you know, well-oiled machine. Um, so you know, just hearing that, um, as a regular civilian, I guess as you would call it. You know, it's 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 you know, for me to be from this country, um, it's, it's something I will learn more about. I remember when I went to an Army All-American game. That's when we've, I really seen the troops um, and it was a, a bunch of them. And then I don't know who it was, but somebody, you know, they got his, one person got all their attention at once. You know, 3000 people got their attention at once. You know, I'm just like, damn, how does one person, you know, what I mean, get get all these people's attention? You know, what I mean, it's just very a, a team that's that's well oiled, that's well focused on, you know, what I mean, their goal and their mission. Um, and I just want to learn more about it. So me being here, it's like, man, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. I'm going to ask a lot of questions because I come from a background that, you know, team is important. Um, one man's mistake will cost a lot of a, a, a group of people stuff, you know. So me being around, I'm like, man, like, well, what, what makes this so well oiled? You know, what I mean, maybe I could come back to my team and tell them, like, this is what we need to do because in the Air Force, they do this. You know what I mean, and look how things play out for them. So I'm interested. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to have you here. So we, uh, you know, yes, we're in the Air Force. We're also in our Special Operations Command. Mm. So we work with our Army, our uh, Green Berets, mm. our Army Rangers. We work with our Navy, our Navy SEAL. So we work with those elite teams. So when we show up at a time and place of our choosing, uh, we can get the mission. And a lot, often it's to return American citizens from, a country, from another country. One, one recent example is the call came in. Uh, and we, we launched aircraft and our, with our people, so we had to have the maintainers to generate the aircraft. We had to put the, the air crew on the aircraft and the equipment and go over to Sudan oh. uh, to, to bring Americans out of harm's way. Uh, another thing we, get to, uh, we would, would say makes us prepared for those kinds of missions is reps and sets, much like you. Mm. Uh, so we practice not till we get it right. You practice till you can't get it wrong. Mm. And that's something that it's probably rings true to you. Yeah. We talk about being mentally, spiritually, and physically fit to fight. So on the mental piece, that's, we can be our own worst enemies. 100%. How do you combat that? What do you do? What, can, what advice can you offer our team on, on staying mentally focused when you've got distractions, whether it's family distractions, friends distractions, maybe it's workplace, mm -hmm. maybe it's locker room distractions or things that yeah. are going on inside your organization. How do you get focused? Well, I think it goes to one word and I think this one word, like, <clears throat> it's actually underrated, but it's it's the will. You know, what are you willing to do? You know, for football, I'm play. I play running back. I'm kind of bigger for a running back. I am, you know, but but I'm always gonna go against somebody who's bigger than me, stronger than me, faster than me. Anyway, you know, if I, a, a D lineman, he's six five to three hundred and twenty pounds, and he has to hit me. You know, what I mean, he's gonna tackle me, and I'm in a small box where I can't really run away from him because. I have to run through this hole no matter what for my team. So, I mean, just the will, like what are you willing to do for your teammates? What are you willing to do for your country? Um, I'm willing to go to the extreme amounts, just to do anything I can for my teammates because this is the ultimate team sport. Um, you know, I play the running back position. It's probably the most violent position. 
you don't you lack that's the least um you don't have really the the long career span that you want in other positions but somebody has to do it you know what i mean and i want to be that person really who can you know tell the team be in front of the team be like, look i'm willing to do this for you guys all you got are you guys willing to do the same for me you know what i mean um so do you I doubt your capability every now and then um a hundred percent you know what i mean but then it goes back to my training you know me training in the off season kind of fades away that doubt i have i, I train a lot i train extremes amount like you're saying repetition i train amount i train probably more normal more more than normal i guess um probably do too much but I want to be in a position where I feel comfortable where you guys and you guys keep doing it over and over and yeah, you guys reps don't feel. I want to be in a position where I feel so comfortable in a situation that other people don't feel comfortable in. Mm -hmm. You know, the game's on the line for me. I want to be that person say, look, give me the ball on third and whatever, and I'm going to get this first down. Like 100%. It goes back to my training. Me constantly doing extra reps, training, you know, cardio. Me even uh, tapping into other sports like boxing and, and other things like that for an extreme amount of cardio. You know, when it's when I'm getting a ball probably like 30 times a game, it's the fourth quarter and you need to get 10 more carries and you're beat up, sore. You know, I mean, you got all type of bruises on your body, bleeding everywhere. You got to be willing to get 10 extra more carries and to end the game, finish it. And then you got to do that again next week, next week, next week, 17 games. And, you know, you know, you, you, you doubt yourself for sure. Um, but you got to remember how, where you started, where you came from. Um, I came for a situation where. You know, I didn't really have nothing in my corner, really. I didn't have nobody in my corner. So, you know, who, who was going to be their biggest believer? Who's going to be that person? And it's just the man in the mirror, really. It's just it's you. You know, nobody's going to believe in your goals and your aspirations than you. I always tell myself that it takes the artist to paint the picture. You know, you're the artist. You know, people are not going to know or see your vision until you paint it out for them. And then when you see it, they see it. It's like, wow. Like, That's a great, you know that's a great analogy. Yeah. I think often we look for that. If we don't see it in the mirror, we look for somebody else to give us that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like you got to look at yourself and you got you to find it from within is what you're telling me. Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. So I would, uh, there's no doubt that uh, most players at your level are physical specimens, right? Mm -hmm. You get the training, you're going <laughs> to yeah. like, if you're not, it's going to show, right? Uh, it's going to be revealed. Um, does, do you find that your organization pours effort into the spiritual piece? Because we're trying to find a balance for, I don't know that there is such a thing as balance. Mm. However, we are trying to find resources and ways to uh, rehab our folks because we know what we need to do physically. Yeah. I think that's a pretty well-oiled machine in your business mm. and in our business. But the mental piece, because what affects you one way might affect me a different, you know, some way different. Exactly. Like, it may never affect you where it affects me really hard. So there's no cookie cutter recipe for bringing folks focused. Mm -hmm. What have you experienced? Can you share anything about that? About just me being focused? or Yeah, or like the, the, the resilience, resilience piece of it. Well, not the physical yeah. aspect, but more, more the mindset what resources you find are beneficial to you and your teammates mm -hmm. to be mentally resilient, man. So or does it always go back to the physical piece? I'm just not nah, sure. nah, like there's more than just physical uh, pieces. Um, you know, I came from a school, Alabama, to, for instance, I came from Alabama. We always teach discipline, pride, effort, commitment. You know, what I mean, we always teach that. Um, and I think that. In, in, in NFL and just being a professional football player, there's more to it than just physical traits. You know what I mean? If you don't have the right mindset, you will never be able to, to provide for the team or you will never be able to, uh, I guess, really just provide for the, just the city, the team, anything, even the NFL in general. Um, always having a great mindset, that's where it always starts from. Uh, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you, have, if you have a terrible mindset, it's the worst thing to have. So I always train myself in a way where you know, um, like what you were saying, you, you always be your biggest critic. You always That's be. Right. So how do I train myself to to put myself in a position where or anything bad happens to me or anything, you know, any type of road bumps I have, any place times I got to be resilient? How do I train myself to uh, to get over that? Um, you know, the, the media and social media, they, it always they always play a factor. Do you look at it? I mean, you try not to, but, you know, in this time and age, it's like everything's on social media. You know, even when I don't try to be on it, it's like, okay, I have, my, I have a marketing thing where I have to post something and I might come across something. It, there's no way you can, 
the now pandemic, time. Everybody you know what I mean? Yeah. So how do I, you know, try to find ways to to use that as fire? That's mm-hmm. what I always tell myself. How do I how do I prove the doubt is wrong? You know, how do I how do I put myself in a position where, you know, when somebody else is in the same position as me, I could tell them like, look at all the people, you know, they're always gonna have their own opinion, but the only opinion that matters is how you view yourself. If you feel like you need to work on something, man, go into a space, uh, train more, um, go into a position where you can train a lot more to, I guess, to um, to work on those things. Um, you know, I'm always in a situation where I have to prove doubt is wrong. Always is, no matter how I've been. So when I was young, all the way up to the NFL, I always be, be in a position where, you know, you have to prove the, the doubt is wrong about you know, what they say. Um, I, I listen, it sounds always, like it's fuel. always fuel, always fuel for me. Um, I've been, I guess I'm so comfortable now and I'm so used to it where I actually like it now. You know what I mean? I'm so used to people saying I can't amount to nothing, but I thrive off of it. This is something that I really like now. Um, it always starts with your mindset though. This is what you're saying, long story short. It's just, no. your mindset is so important. We, uh, I didn't have nobody to, to really hold my hand in, in a way. Um, but like I said, that was a blessing in disguise because now rookies come in or even um, guys who been on other teams and come to this team and they tell me like, what are some ways where I could elevate my game or, or stuff like that? And, I, and I've been in, in every situation they could think of as a young guy that could help them out. So uh, it's a blessing in disguise. Yeah, you know? it's a win. Yeah. You'll grow the next, I'm yeah. certain of it. Yeah. Um, we're getting ready to have a bunch of young high school young men out on Hurlburt Field next weekend to play some seven on seven football uh, that are uh, look to you as a role model, mm. right? They want to be at your level one day. Uh, some of them absolutely may make it on that on, onto that stage. Some of them may not, uh, whether it's for injuries uh, and or for other reasons. Um, you go back in time yeah. to 16 or 17 year old Najee, what would you tell those kids that are facing adversity, uh, that are at a, a fork in the road uh, to either keep, to, to continue? What, what advice yeah. would you give them? So me at 16, 17, right? And just really anybody, um, you kind of still figure out what you want to be in life, you know? Um, and you look at other people and you know you see how they're doing their things. I was in an environment where the people I looked at, they were not doing good at all. Um, and I love looking, listening to motivational speakers, love listening to motivational speakers. And Who's your go-to? Les Brown. Okay. So he told, so yeah, he told me, but I, I, was reading, I always looked at his videos every time because I had to work on my mentality. And he think, one thing that stood out for me the most when he said, um, he said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. So I'm like, man, like that stood out to me ever since I was young, because I would see other people following a direction that's not really where I want to go. And I'm trying to, you know, kind of at a young age, you're kind of saying like, is it okay for me to walk my own path? You know what I mean? So um, that's hard. That's it's hard. hard. It's extremely age, hard. Too. Extremely hard. Especially hard at that. Yeah, extremely. Especially at a young age. You know what I mean? I didn't really have like a role model or something. So um, for me to walk my own path, you know, follow, do, make my own trail. It was extremely hard because you got to face ex- uh, adversity. You got to face everybody telling you what you can't do and what you can't amount to. Um, man, and you know, for me to to go through that journey and for me to to be where I'm at today, man, I would tell people like, you know, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path. Leave a trail. Leave your own trail. Leave leave your own. Make your own story. Um, don't follow the, the that that crowd that you know is not gonna amount to anything you know what I mean um and when you do uh achieve what you do go back to that to that same place that's what I do and try to motivate other people I'm saying like you know walk your own path it's okay to stand out you know what I mean those are who makes the diamonds you know so that's what I'll say that's great advice because yeah. the the challenge in high school at that age when you're trying to figure out what you want to do from mm-hmm. life and the social pressures yeah never changes it doesn't matter what day what decade we're in that's a real thing so i think that'll resonate with the yeah with the young kids that listen les brown though uh, yeah i, oh, I say you knew that uh, pretty Eric good Thomas is another one et yeah et ET's, ET's, et's fire good. et's fire uh, i think I, it doesn't matter how what you look like how old you are you're mm. always looking for some uh some kind of inspiration yeah uh and it may be inspiration for myself for myself because i i doubt my ability uh, to lead all these young men and women, mm. or maybe it's an angle to connect with one of our young 
uh, airmen that has come in. Because I, I'd like to think I'm relevant with 16, 17, hmm. but I'm not. Yeah. Like, let's be real. So uh, I, I, I'm always looking to improve myself. It, it doesn't stop. Everybody's got a story. We can look in a room full of five people or 5,000 people, and everyone has a journey. Uh, you have a story, I have a story, and you know I will tell you that to see you use the platform, uh, the gift that God has given you for good to pay it back. I am a believer uh, that you grow the next, you use your successes, but more importantly, your fail failures to grow the next, and to go back and remind folks like, hey, I was there, I struggled there and to keep pushing forward. Um, I have the honor of being the first Special Operations Wing Commander. So there's a lot of people relying on me to guide the ship and move it uh, the right direction, as well as our command chief. And uh, when we look at using platform for good, one of, the, one of our goals here during, uh, at Holbrook Field is to bring the community on onto the installation so they can see the men and women in uniform doing great work. You're doing the same thing and paying it, uh, paying it forward by going back to where you came from, but looking at the youth to inspire them for the next. Uh, what's what's it? Is there a piece of advice or is there something you'd like to offer to the folks that might be in a position that they can do good? Yeah. That maybe aren't. Yeah, so this platform I have, um, like what you say, you, you work really hard to get there. You know, I mean, now that I'm in a position where I could impact other communities, I use that to my full advantage. So I was homeless for a good amount of my life. Um, so now that I'm here at this stage, um, I partnered with the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, who's one of, my good, one of my good friends. And, you know, homelessness is so huge out there. So now I'm standing up on a podium with him talking about how ways or anything we could do to um, change the situation of homelessness out there. Um, that was something I always wanted to work on and that's something I always wanted to do and I'm still doing to this day uh, with my nonprofit and stuff. So for me, just to, to be in this position where I could shed light on things that I feel like needs to get shed light more on is, uh, is big. So um, obviously homelessness, what I was talking about, um, just about the flag, you talking about flag football in there. Um, that's huge, uh, for, especially for women too, um, getting into flag football and really just expanding our sport. Uh, make it be more worldwide because right now it's kind of an American sport, but you know the more we can expand it um, I want to be the kind of that uh, that person to do that There's a lot of a little other positions where I talk to also in just the running back um, football world, but that's not important um, But no, you know, it's important. <laughs> I think every person you touch right so uh, it's great to have you here because next time you go out on your platform You're gonna say hey like this the military those military folks. They're not so bad. Yeah, uh, we do offer an opportunity and a team Just like the team you're on that maybe that path leads them our way. Exactly. Yeah, so like for, for, for being here um, I, I, You know looking on the outside world we think it's a whole different world here like I said I didn't think you guys have any personality. Thought you guys would be very strict and mean. You know what I mean? Um, just hearing the stuff. Um, it's all for the camera. Yeah, I mean, even playing the games of Call of Duty, none of them even laughs. You know what I mean? Shepard and Ghost in the game, like they're all. I mean, they're all. You guys play Call of Duty, I'm pretty sure. But you know, they're all, it's all very strict. You know what I mean? Right. But just to be here, crack jokes. You know what I mean? Laugh and and spend, have a good time. It's kind of you know you you, you get the, a different perception from the outside world. So just to see that when you get here. It's, it's not like that at all. It's more of a, it feels like a family. You know, you guys are very, um, spend a lot of time with each other. You guys know each other. You guys know exactly what's what, when is the time to turn it on? When is the time to, you know what I mean, uh, relax and, and, and enjoy you guys' self. Um, like I was asking Travis a lot of questions too. I'm thinking y'all don't even go out or nothing or eat out or do, you can't even leave the base. Oh, it's just those MRE, those meals ready to eat. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking y'all eating rations and stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, y'all, 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 it's, it's just a different, um, world and a different perspective when you are really here. Um, looking on the outside in is different from the inside out. We, uh, I, I would offer that if you look at the word get and the word have, so there's a lot of things that as you know, being in the military, we have to do. Hmm. But if you, if you take the have out and you go, I get to, I get to put on this uniform every single day and go defend the freedoms that we hold so dear. Yeah. I get uh, to go get after the enemy. I get to lead men and women in uniform. And I'm just representative of the, an incredible team uh, on, you know, that also wears a uniform. You get to put on your uniform and represent who yeah. you are and your background and your family and your country, essentially, and the Steelers, right, as you get onto that field. So 
I, there are a lot of haves and when I find myself kicking rocks and feeling like Man, I have to, I'm like, I get to, mm. I get to be a part of that. It's a different perspective. Yeah, and that is, and that, and the way you say it like that actually makes a lot more sense. You know what I mean? I'm, I get to wear my, uh, my uniform. Not everybody gets yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. You have to, mm. but not everybody gets to. Yeah.